Hey friends, in this video, I'll be sharing with you the fast learning method I used to go from clueless beginner to drawing at a level where I could finally build a following and do work for companies such as Hololive, where I recently drew an illustration for Watame. And just to give a bit of background, I started art late. I mean, I doodled here and there during high school, but honestly, I spent most of that time just playing video games. It was only after graduating from uni with a degree that I didn't really want and realizing I completely hated my life that I decided to go all in on drawing because other than playing games and watching anime, it was pretty much the only thing I was interested in. And just like everyone else starting out, I had zero skills and zero followers, but I was willing to learn and do whatever it took to get good. So I did whatever a beginner with an internet connection would do and binge watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos. Bought a ton of art books and courses and whatever was recommended and I was off to the drawing races. And didn't get very far. Like, I was spending a lot of time but I wasn't getting the results I wanted. Looking at other people's amazing art on Twitter and Pixiv confused the heck out of me because I had no idea what to do to get that good. Like, how did they do that? What was I doing wrong? So. I became obsessed with finding out the right answer. How does one actually get good at art? And what is the fastest way to do so according to science and the artists that have made it into the industry? So I dove right into all the books, videos and research I could find on the topic and then applied whatever I learned right into my drawing practice, kept what worked and threw out what didn't. It definitely took a long time but I managed to figure out a foolproof system for improving that I still use to this day. And that's what I'll be sharing with you in this video, and I hope you can use it to level up efficiently and make beautiful art. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Ori, and let's get right into it. So after a lot of research and trial and error, I found that the fastest and most effective way to improve is to go through the draw, reflect, learn cycle. That's it. The secret formula is that simple. This method will always work no matter what your skill level is, or what you're trying to learn because it's based on the fundamental way we humans learn any skill. But there is some nuance you have to understand to make the most of it, so let's dive into the details of each part. The first step is to draw, which means draw the thing you want to get good at. That means if you want to get good at anime style art, then you have to draw anime style art. This sounds really obvious, but when I first started, I took a lot of classes on fundamentals, which were usually centered on drawing backgrounds, and I thought it would also make me good at drawing other things like characters too. It didn't because I had no idea how to transfer what I was learning into actually drawing anime characters. And it was only when I realized, oh, if I want to get good at anime illustrations, I just have to draw anime illustrations and not go in a roundabout way by doing these fancy classes and whatnot, which may be slightly related, but not really, that I finally started to improve at it. I had the exact same problem with trying to improve my anime figures by doing croquis sketches. I did a ton of them and I honestly didn't feel like I was improving much. This was because the croquis sketches I did were still too different than the stylized characters I was drawing. It was only when I started taking the time of taking the real life figure and then directly stylizing them into anime as part of the practice that I started to make massive improvement. This extra process of stylization made it directly applicable to the anime characters that I actually drew. Whereas just leaving it as the real life figure wasn't enough for my brain to make that connection. So after doing research, I found that the reality is that skills are very specific. Specific to the domain, which is the area of expertise you're in, and to the situation that you're using that skill. There's this really good article on the topic titled Do the Real Thing by the author Scott Young, which I'll quote from. There's an enormous literature about the narrowness of acquired skills. Learn to do X and then switch to doing Y and you often take a huge performance hit even if X and Y are superficially similar. With practice, for instance, you can get better at discriminating vertical lines, but switch the test to horizontal lines and the benefit of training goes away. There'll be a link to the article down below and I recommend giving a read if you struggle with this kind of thing. So make sure that you're actually drawing what you're trying to get good at and don't substitute it with a fake alternative, even though it's very, very tempting because it's often easier. And when you're practicing, Try to make it as close to the real thing as possible, such as taking that extra step of stylizing the studies you do from real life. The next step is to reflect, which means get feedback on whatever you just drew. There are two main ways to do this when you're learning by yourself. The first is social media metrics. These are likes, comments, and reposts, since retweeting is no longer a thing because the Twitter bird went extinct. Or if you're using threads, re-threading? Or maybe it's knitting. I don't know what it is, but if there are any thread experts, do let me know in the comments down below. 
But if a piece did much better or worse than usual, it can be an indicator that you're doing something right or wrong. But the problem is, it won't tell you exactly what. So make sure to take it with a grain of salt and always combine it with the next form of feedback, which is number two, self-analysis, where you simply note down where you think you can improve. I recommend actually taking down the notes, since if it's just a mental note, you're likely to have forgotten it by the next day. And this is probably our primary source of feedback as an artist. For a piece that you spent a long time working on, do make sure to wait a day or two so you can look at it with fresh eyes. There's actually this phenomenon called Gestaltzerfall. 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 Gesta I don't speak German. But anyway, it's the phenomenon that where you spent so long looking at the thing that you can't actually see the thing as a whole anymore and you're just looking at the parts. So like you might experience this when you're looking at a word too long and then you start to look at the word at letters and then the letters as these weird shapes and you're like, whoa, what is all of this? And that actually happens in art as well, where you've been staring at this piece for so long that you can no longer see the piece as a whole and you're just looking at the individual parts like this stroke here or this arm here, but you're not having a sense of the whole thing. So the way to fix that is that you need to take some time off so you can look at it with fresh eyes. It can also be useful to revisit old pieces again because you'll be able to pick up on improvement points that you didn't catch the first time around. And also your future self might have finally leveled up enough to know how to fix the problem. It also helps with motivation to see how far you've come when you first started versus now. Oftentimes you're looking back at a piece you drew a year before and you're like, hmm, that's pretty cool. I have improved a bit. Okay, once you have your feedback, you'll probably find that there's a lot of things that need working on, and that's okay. My list of things to improve is also infinitely long, and all we have to do is treat these as a list of bugs to fix in your drawing.exe program. It will take time, but once you fix them, your program will be amazing. And fix might not even be the right word here, since all we're doing is really just leveling it up enough so it's no longer a problem in our art. Now, the most important part of all of this is to prioritize. Highlight just one thing you'd like to improve at because you're gonna improve much faster when you focus on that one thing than trying to work on 10 things at the same time. You can choose to focus on whatever interests you the most, but if you really want to supercharge your learning, I would recommend identifying what the bottleneck in your skill is right now and focusing on that. The bottleneck is the weakest part of a system which limits the overall output. In our case, the output is a great looking illustration and whatever our weakest skill is right now usually becomes the bottleneck. An extreme example of this would be if you have a person that's really good at composition, lighting, color, perspective, but they've never learned how to draw the figure, so they're like only able to draw stick people. Then that's gonna be the obvious bottleneck holding them back from creating whatever masterpiece they want to make, if they wanted to draw character art, of course. To give my own example, I always enjoyed the lighting and coloring part of drawing more, so I spent most of my time focusing on those areas. But as a result of that, I neglected my figure drawing for ages. So over time, that just compounded and it eventually became this massive bottleneck for me. And my underdeveloped skill of drawing the figure was basically holding everything else back. So in that situation, it would have been super inefficient to just keep adding skill points into light and color when figure drawing was a constraint. And the moment I tackled that bottleneck, the quality of my art was able to increase massively in a short period of time because the main constraint was finally lifted. By the way, plateauing is usually caused by ignoring these bottlenecks. We humans seem to have a natural tendency to just keep wanting to practice what we're already good at because it makes us feel good. We feel confident, people tell us we're good, so we just want to keep doing more of it. But that leaves us very vulnerable down the road to being constrained by one or two weaknesses that we've completely ignored. So by focusing on your bottlenecks, you'll not only get the most results for the time you spend practicing, but you're also gonna future-proof yourself from these plateaus. This video focuses more on self-learning, so I'm going to keep this part short. But the other way to get feedback is to simply hire a teacher or mentor to look at your work. Technically, it's the highest quality feedback you can get since an expert can tell you both what you're doing wrong and how to fix it. The main problem is that it can be expensive and hard to get in English for anime art. But there is good news. There's actually a way to receive this level of feedback through doing studies if you meet the three conditions, which I'll talk about later in the video. Also, I wanna make it clear that expert feedback is more of a nice to have than a necessity to get good. 
All you're doing is really just trading money to speed up the learning time. But that doesn't mean you can't just spend the time to learn the skill. Many artists never had a mentor, and these days there's so many high quality books and courses you can learn from. Heck, even the quality of free tutorials on YouTube is so freaking high these days. I personally put a ton of effort into making these videos because I want to make sure you guys find it as helpful as possible. And I really enjoy it when I see a comment or tweet saying they tried this stuff in the tutorial and improved. By the way, if you are finding the video helpful, I hope you can let me know by dropping a quick like. But anyway, the point is, it's never been easier to learn art regardless of whether or not you can hire a mentor or go to an art school or not. As long as you're willing to learn and put in the time, you'll improve. And the third step is to learn, which means find a resource and do the practice that will help you get better at the thing that you highlighted from the previous step. When it comes to self-learning, there are two main approaches to this. The first is structured learning. So these are videos, tutorials, courses, or books to help guide you. The most important thing is that you do whatever practice exercise they tell you to do, because it's usually by getting the reps in that you actually learn the skill and not just by passively watching or reading the material. You can think of drawing as similar to a sport like basketball, where you can't get good by watching other people play, but you can improve by actually getting on the court and practicing your dribbling and shooting. The second approach to learning is to do studies. This is basically learning by analyzing and copying a reference, whether that's an illustration drawn by an artist you admire, a scene from an anime, or an example from a book. A lot of skill building is about pattern recognition, and by doing studies, we can learn what the patterns are in the subject or style of what we want to draw. I like to do studies through the CCC method, which is copy, compare, change. So you first draw a copy of the reference or just the part of it that you want to learn from. Because sometimes copying the whole reference just takes way too much time, whereas if all you want to study is the hair, then just copy the hair part. Now, I don't recommend tracing because the whole point is to use your brain while drawing the copy so you can actually learn. You also need to keep asking yourself, why does the thing you're drawing look that way? Such as, why did the artist make the decision to use this color for the shadows? And thinking about it. The next step is to compare your copy with the original by pasting the original directly on top of it and then noting down the differences and analyzing them. You actually want to paste the original on top of yours. I used to do studies just analyzing it side by side, but I found that when I compared by pasting the original right on top, I could immediately see everything that was wrong with my copy and learn much faster that way and with more accuracy too because if you're just doing side by side, you're often missing all the little details and little nuances that's really hard to get by just looking at it. Finally, the last step is to change. So fix your copy as best you can to be like the original. Again, it's going to be very tempting to just fix it by tracing on top of the original that you pasted on your copy. But don't do that because again, you're not activating the brain that way. So once you finish comparing, do hide that original that you pasted on top and try to fix your copy without tracing it. By the way, some of you may have noticed that this is really just another draw reflect learn cycle because effective learning really boils down to the same three core steps of doing the thing, getting feedback, and then making changes based on the feedback. This is the bonus third approach, but once you have a lot of experience, experimentation and finding your own way to do things is another way to learn. But I don't recommend this for beginners because it's more efficient to just learn from others at the start. I'd like to take a moment to quickly thank XP Pen for kindly sponsoring this video. They're just about to release their new Decker Pro 2, which is the world's first pen tablet with 16K levels of sensitivity. I got permission to compare it with my 2K and 8K pressure tablets, and I'm generally curious to see how much of a difference it actually makes, so let's try it out. From previous testing, I usually find that the more sensitive the pen is, the thinner the thinner stroke can go, as well as the more gradual you can ramp up the stroke with. And I think it actually does a good job of capturing really light pressure, so you can make these really thin strokes, more so than the 8K pressure pens. So here's a test sketch that I did with the tablet just using a G pen. It was very comfortable to draw with. I don't normally sketch with the G-Pen because it's very flat, but I felt because the tablet could capture such thin strokes that I could create a nice sketch effect using it. The tablet also comes with this nice little shortcut device that I found very responsive and easy to use. And I think that makes it a great value package, especially for beginners looking to get their first tablet and shortcut device. So if that interests you, make sure to check it out in the link below. Now, once you've done the practice or studies, it's time to see if the learning was actually successful. So you can do this by just going back to the start of the cycle, which is to draw a new piece and then reflect whether you improved or not. If you did, great, it was a success. You can focus on the next bottleneck holding you back now. But the most likely thing that will happen to all of us is that we did improve a bit, but it's not enough to break through that weakness just yet. 
It's like we gained 50 EXP points, but we actually needed 250 to get to the next level for that ability. So in that case, we can just keep focusing the learning part on the same thing and keep farming those EXP points by repeating the cycle until we do level up in that skill and can focus on the next thing. So a teacher or mentor does three things for us. One, they tell us what we're doing wrong. Two, how to fix it. And three, give that feedback based on our current skill level. Which means that if we can set up how we learn to meet those three conditions, we can actually receive expert feedback without an expert. Let's see how we can meet each condition. The first condition we can meet by doing a study, since comparing our copy with the original tells us what we're doing wrong. The second condition we can meet if we have step-by-step -step explanations of how the final result is achieved, since if we make a mistake, it will allow us to trace back to which step we got wrong and how to fix it. Finally, the third one we can meet by making sure we have the prerequisite skills necessary to learn what we're trying to learn. For example, in maths, before you can learn the more complex skill of algebra, you first need to learn the simple skills like addition and subtraction. Art is the same. Learning to draw the whole anime body requires us to be able to draw each individual part, like the torso, head, limbs, separately first, and also how to stylize them from real life. We also need the fundamental skill of being able to draw basic shapes like a box correctly in perspective. So oftentimes, whenever we think a book, course, or tutorial is confusing, there's a high likelihood that the material itself is valuable, but we're currently missing the prerequisite skills to learn from it. To give an example from my own learning journey, around the time I was starting out, I bought this book on how to draw a beautiful fantasy world and characters by the illustrator Fuzi Choko, who I really looked up to. And the contents of the book just flew way over my head, even though I tried my very best to follow it step by step. So I put it aside and actually didn't touch it again until earlier this year, which is almost four years later. And when I did, I was like, oh my god, this stuff is so good, and I can immediately apply all of it. Why didn't I get this before? In reality, the contents of the books had always been amazing. It's just that the second time I picked it up, I finally had all the prerequisite skills necessary to understand and really make use of that information. So basically, you need to ask yourself this question. Do I have the necessary skills to learn this, or do I need to go back and learn a more basic skill first? So putting all of this together, this means we can get high quality feedback if we do studies of something with work through examples that matches our current skill level. The hardest condition to meet is of course the work through examples part, but you can find them from tutorials, books, videos, and courses. And the question really becomes whether the explanation is made for the skill level that you're at right now. Because oftentimes people who make these tutorials, including myself, will either forget the existence of the basic skills because it's just become automatic through repetition, or we've deliberately chosen to assume that the viewer has them for the sake of coherence. Because imagine having to explain what every single word means in a sentence one by one every time you speak. What you're explaining will become way too long and derail from the main topic too much. So the learned part of the cycle can be shorter or longer depending on what you're trying to learn. Here's some examples of the draw reflect learn cycles I've done in the past. A shorter cycle, learning to draw wrinkles. This is a mini cycle I usually do whenever I encounter something I don't understand how to draw while I'm in the middle of making an illustration. So draw, I'm in the middle of drawing an illustration, reflect, I realize that I can't draw the wrinkles of a specific piece of clothing well because I don't understand it. And then learn, I go find a couple of photo references and do studies of them. Then I go back and apply what I learned to the illustration I'm drawing. This also acts as a test to see whether the learning was successful and if it wasn't, I go back to learning it, either by doing more studies or finding a different resource to learn from. This next one is an example of a longer cycle I did to overhaul my hair drawing. Draw, I drew an illustration. Reflect, I realized I really needed to level up my hair drawing skills. It was a massive bottleneck holding me back. Learn, I found a good resource on the topic, in this case, the book How to Draw Hair by Pari and I spent the next few weeks doing studies of all the different hairstyle examples in the book. Since this is a longer learn cycle, I made sure to weave in drawing in my own original sketches from time to time in order to test whether I'm actually learning something. It's kind of like doing mini draw reflect learn cycles, but just on hair. So learn, study different hairstyles, draw my own original sketches, reflect, did the sketch turn out well? Was I able to apply what I learned? And if the answer to that is no, I go back and analyze what needs changing or whether I just need to keep learning more of this until I get the hang of it. This is a bonus tip, but it's the most important. You'll often hear me talk about drawing like it's a game, from grinding for EXP points to leveling up the drawing. 
But drawing really is just an infinite game where you win as long as you keep playing the game. Like, I don't think you win when you get a million followers and work for the next MiHoYo game. You win by continuing to draw and trying to get a little better at it each time. So really, the only way to lose is if you quit, and as long as you keep on going, you're actually winning the game. I'll leave you with this really good quote that our beloved Hololive Grim Reaper said during an interview. If you quit when you suck, you'll suck forever. When I first heard it, it hit me like a ton of bricks and I was like, damn, I have never heard of something so infuriatingly true. And it actually stuck with me and I used to remember it whenever the motivation tank started to run low. So don't quit when you suck because that's the worst time to quit and just keep on going and improving one cycle at a time. Anyway, this was a longer video than usual, so thank you so much if you're still watching. And if you want to learn more about anime art, click the video on the left for the 5 best hair drawing tips that I learned, and the video on the right if you want to learn my process for taking these illustrations from sketch to color. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and you can also find me on Twitter which is where I post all of my art. This was Ori, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!